This next interview put the spotlight on one man's personal story that is rooted in American history. He's a descendant of both the president and that president's slaves. Now, most of us know Thomas Jefferson as the third president of the United States, but our guest today says Jefferson was his sixth great-grandfather. Shannon Lanier is here this afternoon along with Jane Fellman. They co-authored the book Jefferson's Children, the story of one American family. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. The book, obviously you wrote it 10, 12 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's a story that continues to resonate. Mm -hmm. um, the story so, yeah. of Thomas Jefferson's relationship with his, one of his slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't say alleged, as we like to do. <laughs> right, <laughs> absolutely. It's fact. We know it's because yeah. it's exactly. fact. Mm -hmm. now, did you grow up knowing this story? Well, it was shared to me by my family. My mother passed the story down through oral history to my brother Sean and I. So growing up, I always knew the story. You know, ever since I was little, you know, getting the $2 bills from some of my uncles for Christmas and, you know, cute little things like that in the family. But, you know, it was one of those things that we just knew. Like my, my grandmother is who my grandmother is. Thomas Jefferson was my great, 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 great grandfather. It was just one of those things that was in the family that we knew. We didn't really talk about it too much, but mm -hmm. we knew it. But there came a point, though, when mm -hmm. you did talk about it. And, <laughs> you know, uh, you, we fast forward. Mm -hmm. There's been big reunions at Monticello. Mm -hmm. I know that first reunion was, and was a little bit tense yeah. between it the two was. families. I guess mm -hmm. the Jefferson side and the Hemings side. Yeah, and, you know, the media, as much as we love them, did <laughs> help, you know, tear some rifts in the family and try to make yeah. it into a black-white Jerry Springer show. Mm -hmm. You know, the Jeffersons meet the Hemings for the first time but you know there were a lot of great things that happened that day that may not have I had the opportunity to have those stories told descendants who looked like each other meeting for the first time descendants that embraced each other and said cousin it's been so long you know those are the things that we like to focus on and that have carried out since then with us going to each other's funerals and weddings and parties mm -hmm. and you know everything just celebrating each other as family you know getting an opportunity to meet and learn more about each other and I think that's more of a powerful story than just saying oh they didn't get along they yeah. looked that, at each other it wasn't other's a stuff. Hatfield McCoy's thing it was exactly. a whole lot deeper than that and Nobody exactly. pulled out a gun. No, there were just a few people. <laughs> there were, that weren't there were a few <laughs> people yeah. that did not want to associate or talk to some of the other ones, but they were a very small number, and we're, we're happy about that number. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jay, how did how is it that you came to co to to collaborate with him oh, on this project? Well, okay, I will try to tell the story as briefly as I can. But um, the the uh, long and short of it is, uh, I've been fascinated with Shannon's family before he even was born. Um, I grew up here in New York City, in Chelsea, in a very uh, in a a diverse community, black and Puerto Rican neighborhood, which was Chelsea back then. Mm -hmm. And I read Fawn Brody's book published in the 70s and was fascinated by this information I never knew. And my friends of color all looked at me like I was the crazy one saying, of course, mom told me, grandma told me, you don't know this. <laughs> so the inequity in history really became my fascination. And uh, when the DNA proved out in 98, what the oral tradition of the family had always in fact known, um, uh, 10 days after the DNA, uh, the Oprah show aired and and I was sitting watching Oprah that day, and I heard Lucian K. Truscott IV invite his Hemings cousins, being a Martha descendant. And I thought, OK, I'm working on a book on the American family, and I can't think of a, matter, a more symbolic, emblematic family than <laughs> the Hemings <laughs> exactly. and the Jeffersons. Exactly, and went down to photograph them that, uh, in May of 1999. And that's when Shannon and I met. So this was not even an intention to do this book. It was in meeting the descendants. Shannon met family that he's mm -hmm. never met. He mm -hmm. knew his Madison descendants, but not the Estens and the Woodsons. And what amazed us in trying to rally the family for this f symbolic shot was to meet the, f the descendants of the first black uh, graduate of Vassar and MIT mm -hmm. and first mm -hmm. black uh, yeah. legislator. All it's part really of this, incredible. this family. So, yeah. yeah. Now, I we talked a little bit before the camera started rolling here just about how this story resonates and, mm -hmm. and how, you know, over the time since you wrote the book, mm -hmm. since that first reunion, more and more people know the story, but also we felt are a little bit more open to the story and mm -hmm. don't have, seem to have as difficult a time as, as hearing from yeah. you that you're Jefferson's great, 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 right. great, great, great grandson. Mm -hmm. Why is that, do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, we see Barack Obama in the White House. Mm -hmm. Is that one reason? Are we just more mature as mm -hmm. a nation? Why do you I think? I think we are maturing. We still have a lot 
a lot further to go, but I think people are coming to realization that we are a multicultural community in this country mm -hmm. and that we have to start accepting that regardless of how it is. And for the black community, you know, we always have been so accepting of yes. <laughs> everybody and anyway. We all know that we're yes. all mixed up. And we see it in our own family reunions. You know, in the book we show pictures of my rainbow family, you know, going from blonde hair and mm -hmm. blue eyes to, you know, darker than me. And that's just the black community. We're mixed up of a melting pot of beautiful people. And so I think that people are starting to realize that that is America. America is this melting pot, even with the president and his multicultural it's background. The it's the same thing. And people are starting to realize that and accept that. Now, again, we have further to go. But as Jane and I go around the country speaking to people and helping people find out more about their backgrounds, they're finding out that they're a lot more diverse than they thought right, they were. Exactly. I mean, when you think about passing. Passing didn't just happen in the black community. People came no, from all exactly. other, uh, like many countries, passing, trying to be more American, trying to hide their backgrounds. So Losing an accent and your heritage. Exactly. It's the American way. So if you start digging a little bit in yeah. your family background, you may find out a little bit more about yourself than you thought what you, you knew. It's exactly. <laughs> One of the things you mentioned to me, Jane, was the fact that uh, at Monticello, there is going to be a symposium. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, tell uh, me a little bit about it's that. It's going to be uh, I've got February 22nd. Thank you. 22nd and 22nd. 23rd, I believe. <laughs> it's a two-day symposium. And um, again, it's it's funny. It's like we're coming of age and we're coming of age in terms of academia and how to deal and uh, with um, all of this information and the science and uh, the history as it all comes up. So the symposium, uh, Annette Gordon-Reed, who uh, won a Pulitzer for her work with the Hemings family. And the, the point of the symposium, they're going to um, help uh, educators teach this integrate. part of the Jefferson story? Abs absolutely, and not just the Jefferson story, but to integrate. The Smithsonian's doing a fabulous idea. I know I'm jumping ahead, but the Smithsonian show that was in DC and is going to Atlanta starting on February 1st, it's a, it's, it's a new way of, instead of teaching, this is the third president, and this is his home, and mm -hmm. this is the slaves who worked for him, it's all who resided on Monticello and the yes. interdependency and the interrelationships. And well, that's, that's what's changed. One of the thing, mm -hmm. uh, things people of color have always argued about the American history that yes. was taught. I, maybe it's a little right. different now. I'm not sure. But it didn't include these stories. I mean, exactly. slavery was a separate issue. Yeah. Um, the, you know, what if Native Americans succeeded at something, it was mm -hmm. a separate issue. Instead of integrating it right. all as American Absolutely. history, it sounds and like that's what this symposium very much so. is aiming to do. And very I think that's so. what both Monticello and the Smithsonian, with their exhibit, their traveling exhibit, is doing is helping to tell the full story of Thomas Jefferson and not just the, 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 the guy, the president, you know, is the guy who had these slaves who worked in sweat, blood sweat and tears to build up Monticello several times. They helped it. He didn't do it by himself. Exactly. Right. And so that's well, again, right. there is the complex legacy. Mm -hmm. The man who so wrote those famous words, yes. we the people, was not written for women and people of color. And for so we're all. trying to really wrap our brains around it. It's a living document. And it's up to us as, as we embrace it. It's really days. America's story. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think, exactly. Oh, with this. Okay. Oh, thank I know you. we're out of so time. Much time. <laughs> well, you <laughs> can get us here in this business. I know. Well, they can go to our <laughs> Facebook page, uh, you know, facebook.com slash Jefferson's Children and find out more about us or speaking engagements, the book, all that stuff. So. Okay. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you very much. This is awesome.